Hello, welcome back to Helloverse. Hey. Hi. Um, so in this episode, we actually have a special guest. Ooh, insert music right here instead of like the boom boom. Ooh, is that yeah? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so Dinya, would you introduce yourself first? Uh, yes, uh, Dinya. Dinya. <laughs> Uh, Dini, so I, that's actually the name I go for when I'm in Germany because it's easier to pronounce. And also mm. at home, I'm like people call me actually Dini. Uh, live in Germany, Cologne, Ooh. Uh, for about nine years now. That's really long. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really long time. So yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, yeah, but anyway. Originally from here. Um, oh, but Lampung. Okay. Ah, I see. All right. So, by the way, Dini is actually Nilam's friend. They have been friends since middle school. Middle am I? School, yeah. Am I right? Yep. And how did you guys meet up? Were it's you guys middle. like in the same class or we anything? In the same class. We we were classmates ah. in middle school mm-hmm. and high school. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, we've been friends like for fifteen years, I think, and more. Yeah, maybe more, more or less. Years. Wow. 15 years of friendship yeah. SMP2, SMA2 SMA Now you guys know how smart they probably are <laughs> That's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> Unggulan guys yeah. Alright, anyway So today we're gonna be talking about reverse culture shock So for all of you guys who might not know what reverse culture shock is So reverse culture shock is basically a culture shock When someone who has been living abroad for an um, extended period of time Like, let's say Dini has been living in Germany for nine years. And then when she came back to Indonesia, the culture in Indonesia might not suit what, uh, might not suit with the way, like, sh- with the way she lives in Germany. So that's pretty funny, isn't it? I mean, thinking about reverse culture right. shock. Like, you're from Indonesia, yeah. but then you're coming back and you're like, what? what? <laughs> Why are people like you're this? Lost. You know? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> well, anyway, but before we go into that topic like deeper, I think we should start with introduction that we basically have been talking <laughs> before. So we're just gonna skip like Dini. Um, what are you doing in Cole for nine nine years? Yeah, nine years. Yes. Yeah. So I graduated high school mm-hmm. and then went to Germany <clears throat> to do my bachelor degree, Ooh. and then did my bachelor there, completed it, um, work. Part time, so I've been also waitressing and all this kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. uh, and then finish the bachelor study. I graduated, got a job there. Couldn't say no, so I stayed there. <laughs> 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 of course, yep. I would. Um, and then what happened afterwards? And I did a dual master degree, so I had uh, I did that on top of work. So I've been also been working. And then, yeah, now I'm working uh, full-time as Senior Learning Development Manager at a startup in Germany. Wow. wow. That's a lot to digest. Wow. <laughs> not one, not two. Yeah. Well, I mean, two dual masters means like you're taking two different majors, right? Yeah. And what were they? Um, one international business and the other is like an MBA, but it's from a Brazilian university. So I was in Brazil for a couple of months as well. <gasps> Oh my god, she's so cool. <laughs> Damn. So wait, you study in Germany and then midway you transferred to Brazil for like several months. Yeah, so the German university had a cooperation with a Brazilian university. So oh. like all the credits that I got in Germany would also count for the oh MBA god. degree from the Brazilian university. So that's why when I finished, it was a two years program. Uh-huh. But when I finished, I got the dual degree. Brazil. Yes, there you go. That's... And I and I heard that she traveled a lot too for oh. work. Yes, right. Um, yes, it was because like I was in a trainee program. It was an international trainee program, and it was across like different countries in Europe. So oh. I had to travel because of that. And then I think afterwards, when I did a master degree, I had to travel a lot to Paris because there is also an office there. Oh. So I regularly traveled there as well. And I think I met you or no. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember because you know? we, we met quite a lot of times and we didn't even take pictures once. Also, you guys like, I mean, you live in Paris before, right? So you guys yeah, met up Paris, in Paris, in but London. you guys didn't take picture. No. In London too? Yeah. No. Yeah, wow. because I don't know, we got used to um, the life there where we didn't often use our cell phone oh, like anywhere. We just like, wow. yeah, interact to each other, you know. 
that's a whole new world for yeah, me. Internet. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you just completely forgot yeah, that, like, yeah. oh, oh you're right, God. like, yeah, we went there, <laughs> yeah, something like that. But if you guys don't use your cell phone, it means that you guys probably had a very good time, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what people say. Like, if you forget to use your cell phone, it means that you're having a very good time. Exactly, yeah. But, like, listening to her story, <laughs> that sounded like a, a Netflix series, Netflix. you know? A Netflix series that I would watch, a actually. <laughs> a dream. Damn, I know. Such a dream came true. But anyway, moving. <laughs> let's move on from Dini and, and all her, like, majestic story. Majestic story. And then we're going to go to Neelam. I mean, Neelam also has a lot of experience in living abroad. Um, yeah. When did when was your first time living abroad? Uh, uh, when I finished high school. In, I went to in 2011. Uh, Same with Dini. Uh -huh. But I went to Singapore first. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I got accepted in the UK, but my parents wouldn't allow me because it was too far from them. So yeah, Singapore it was. And um, it wasn't quite long. I finished my mm -hmm. bachelor degree in two years. Actually, I needed uh, to finish it in three years, but I took the summer semester. Uh, so yeah, I didn't. I didn't take the holiday damn. instead. <laughs> These and two yeah. hard workers in front of me, and I feel like a failure. No. Damn, two years in completing your bachelor Bachelor's degree, yeah. which was supposed to be three years, but yeah. no, because you're Kiasu and you're so Kiasu, ambi. Yeah, we are so Asians. <laughs> oh my god. And then after that, 2011, you after that you moved to another country, right? Yeah, I moved to Beijing hmm. for one year. Uh -huh. To I don't I don't know like actually I just followed my friends because huh? <laughs> yeah <What? laughs> I don't know, because a lot of my friends from university went to Beijing to mm -hmm. study business and language. Oh. Because most of them were Chinese mm -hmm. and Singaporeans, you know. Yeah. yeah. Singaporean. They have to. They had to learn uh, Chinese, oh. so I just followed them because I didn't at that time. I didn't know what to do. What else uh, to do? Then. I see. What I was thinking, like, okay, I will travel more. <laughs> yeah, like play more. Like, it's an know. opportunity to travel around. <laughs> Why not, right? Exactly. And then after that, you wait. Did and you go straight away to the UK, or did no, you like no. take a year off or something? Um. I went back to Indonesia just for one year and oh. then I went to Milan to work. Oh, yeah. How long did you live in Milan? Um, almost one year, I think. Damn, I didn't know this like, one. Really? I mean, I knew that you say that you live in Milan, but I didn't know like how long uh, it was. Yeah, it was almost for one year. Ah, for what were you doing in working. Milan? There was an event called, um, you know, World Expo? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's like a, uh, one of the biggest event, international events in the world. Ah. And then um, I got appointed uh, by the government and and the company oh. I was working in. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Damn. So it was like a huge opportunity. Then why not? That sounded also like a Emily in Paris oh, no. kind of thing. <laughs> no, in Paris. <laughs> Bro. All right. So anyway, um, Dini has been living in Cologne for almost nine years or um, nine years. No. So I've been actually moving a lot in Germany. So I oh. like Cologne is just a city where I live now. Okay. <laughs> um, and before that, like when I arrived, I was in a small town called Kasua. Kas and then Kas I moved to Kaiserslautern. And then I moved again <laughs> to uh, Reutlingen. Oh, and I moved to cities. Stuttgart and I moved to München. Wow. wow. And then I was in Hamburg when I met you as well. Yes. Ah. Uh, where else? Like almost all the <laughs> cities. She's been all over Germany. In Germany. It's Ooh. mostly because of work or like internship or I was doing something for the university. And I also lived in Austria for six months in Innsbruck. So, yeah. So I have a question. Like, even my family usually don't really... Remember anymore? Because <laughs> okay. you move so yeah. much, Where they lost count. Like they will be like, if a relative or someone asks, and they're like, "Yeah, Dini is Germany somewhere." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I actually have a question: Have you traveled Lampung more or Germany? 
which one have you traveled more like explore well i was pretty lucky because i'm originally from here and i mm. had i have relatives all over lampung oh. so my family used to take me like you know during lebara and and like all of these things i would travel like i've visited all the natural yeah. uh, like places to visit uh-huh. um, so i'm not you know one of those lampung who's never been in waikambas for example <laughs> me uh, <laughs> me <laughs> exactly. i've never been to waikambas really no. look at you um so yeah i i would i would say that i've traveled uh lampung but like in comparison i've haven't traveled that much in indonesia uh-huh. but i've traveled a lot in germany but like even for german when i told them that yeah I've been living in this different cities <clears> they will be like okay like even i haven't visited those <laughs> cities <sighs> so yeah i have been to germany but like a very small part of it but i know that germany is such a beautiful Future. country like the architecture and everything um can you please tell us like how is it living in germany did you find it nice i mean is it like enjoyable or is it Bad. Well, I've been there for nine years. Yes. It should be enjoyable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true, actually. You don't there. ask. But like, yeah, what do you like the most about Germany, though, about living in Germany? Um, I would say just the, um, the predictability of it, if that makes sense. The predictability. Well, that makes sense. Um, because like in, in comparison to Indonesia, Germany is just very much in order. You can actually plan your days there. Like, Everything must be scheduled. You know. <laughs> oh, nice. Exactly. So that is uh, actually pretty comfortable. Like, especially if you are, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a very structured or organized person. Mm. But even then, um, just like the fact that, you know, you pretty much know what's going to happen the next two weeks. <laughs> Wow, you can predict that oh, far. That's people actually book their vacation days one year before. <laughs> That's so German. <laughs> That's so German. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the, like on top of the obvious ones, like technology, infrastructure, blah blah blah, like all mm. of these cool things. Yep. Um, I would say, like, what makes it very, very comfortable is just the the predictability of it, and so and. It, means also the security of it like mm. they have a very good uh, social security system that oh, whatever nice. happens to you you're gonna be fine oh. so that's that's pretty cool of germany damn that's yeah. wow i never dream of actually like living there and now listening to it i'm yeah. like i should have gone to germany you know yeah, like, like why not what country did you choose uh, did you choose for studying um, or working Working. Oh well, the first time my my experience of living abroad um, it was Korea, South Korea. Um, I lived there for about one and a half year because I have an aunt who lives there. Uh, and then after that, I moved to Australia for my bachelor degree. I live in Melbourne. Uh, took psychology there for about two and a. It was almost three years because I didn't take the summer oh. class. Yeah, <laughs> I skipped the summer class because I'm not as ambi as you. Okay, <laughs> but um, and after that, I moved to London. where yeah where we met <laughs> well she was like one year earlier than me so like the time when i went to london she was almost finished well i think the time when i went to london she was already in paris yeah. already and then paris. like randomly in like a few weeks after i moved to london she was like Kat, where are you i'm in london let's meet up <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's have dinner. wait do you have been to kemana saja or what <laughs> <laughs> that's just me yeah. unexpected it was just so random and then Anyway, what was the question again? <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Okay. Actually, I have a question for you because, like, moving on from Dini. Um. What is that again? You live in Singapore and then in Beijing and also in Milan. London, in Milan, and in Paris. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> um. But then, among all these five countries, which one is your favorite? My favorite. Yeah. Of course. London. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. You like London actually? I I love London. Why? Because like it's so multicultural that you mm. can meet like you can meet you can um, talk to people from anywhere around the world. Like yeah. it's really diverse. You know. That's true. And then like the foods are good. You know, the, like, uh, there are a lot of cool places to visit. Mm. Right. And I just love the neighborhood and everything there. The neighborhoods in yeah, London. Yeah, people are nice. People are nice. Yeah. People are nice. Yes. Oh. 
okay, maybe you in the wrong neighborhood. I think I live in the wrong neighborhood. Because I live in W1. Damn. <laughs> well, she lives in the center while I live in the east. But I I wouldn't call London as my favorite city. I would pick Melbourne, to be honest. But I hated my time when I was there. Because... Did you, you stay at home? Um, no, not like I, I stay at home all the time. It was more like... Um, the university that I study at, um, it was located quite far from the city center. So I live in a suburb and yeah, you know, you know that I'm, I'm very mager, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm pretty much a very lazy person. I, I don't go out of my house if it's not so necessary. Um, there was one time when I didn't actually go to the city for about three months. And then the time when I came to the city, I was like, wow, <laughs> all these tall buildings. <laughs> Wow, I've missed a that's, lot. That's me during the pandemic. Like, yeah. wow. I didn't know. Right. Yeah, and then, but Melbourne was amazing. I mean, if I have to compare the food between London and Melbourne, mm -hmm. I would pick Melbourne because like there is Why? so much fusion food, like oh, Asian fusion. mixed with Western food, which I love the most. Why? And then, I hate fusion wait, food? you hate fusion food? I love food? fusion food. I love Ooh, fusion food. I, hate so mm. I, I feel like, just say true to your, like, Identity. If you're gonna uh, be Asian, be Asian. Be Asian. <laughs> if you're gonna be, if you're Western, gonna be Asian, be Western. So German. <laughs> but that's true. Well, um, but Melbourne is a pretty. It's a pretty relaxed city, I would say, because like people are laid back, mm -hmm. and then you can find coffee shop in every corner of the town. Mm -hmm. So it was relaxing for me. But the workload from my university was hell. So exactly. that was probably like my my main reason of like major burnout, because mm -hmm. like. <laughs> Two years after, I think, yeah, two years after graduating from that university, I still woke up with like sweat. And I'm like, oh, I, have, I forgot to, I forgot to submit my assignment. Deadline, you know? deadline, 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 deadline. Oh my god, I forgot to submit. And then after, after like you know, like a few seconds, I'll be like, oh, I'm back at home. <laughs> you know, it was so traumatizing. Um, what else? Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So the first time you moved to Germany, Dina, did you experience any culture shock? Did you find it hard to adapt to the local culture? Like it wasn't probably like I didn't have like, oh, like I didn't expect this because mm -hmm. before I went, I actually like educated myself how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So I kind of already expected. But like the first time I felt like, oh, my God, like what is this, uh, was when I was working as like a cashier in Burger King. Um, mm -hmm. And then like Germans are very famous with their straightforwardness. Huh. Just the way they say things, they don't, they don't mince word. They are not like us who like uh, never say no, yeah. always oh. polite, all of this thing. So I have like a senior who was supposed to teach me things like, show me how to you know type stuff what kind of mm. things i need to insert how to count the money like all of this basic things and i remember i did a mistake i don't remember what anymore but like i made a mistake and then she was like scolding me pretty harshly like in my opinion at the time like okay like you can tell me i did something wrong with a nicer tone mm. like you don't mm. have to like you know, like, this is like, she was, she was like, all oh, this is wrong. Like, you should have done this like this. This will impact the customer like this and this and this and this and this. And then she did it like, you know, in front of people. So I was like, oh, oh my God, like, it wasn't like, it wasn't rude, uh -huh. um, but it was just harsher yeah. than, yeah. than, and you know, as a foreigner, you are like, oh, I want to do good. I, you don't want to right. like make mistakes, all of this stuff. So when she was scolding me, I was like, okay, am I in trouble? Am I going to get fired? Oh. Um, and then afterwards, like when it's done, she was like, do you want to some iced tea? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and, then, okay. and then she was like, yeah, now it's over. Like I already told you what you did wrong and I already showed you how to do it right. Oh. So now like it's, it's over like for her. It's just her way of like German's way of, if you if you are doing something wrong, then they will correct you, but they will not be like, you know what? Like you should have probably I'm done it all Aww. the time. Yeah, bring and it then, up all the time. You know, next time it's okay. Like they're not doing it like that. They're doing it like, like straight very forward. straightforward, very like with, and then with that's clear all. words, and then that's all. 
but it was for me like i was really worried that oh my Shut. god am i gonna get fired like what is this oh i must i'm so dumb like i'm a <laughs> foreigner that is just don't know how to do things um but then that was like for me the first time and it was like what hmm. my third year in germany my second wow. year um because that was also like my first time in a working environment so not necessarily at uni where you oh. are where you have friends and yeah. they're mm-hmm. they're not as like oh did you did your sign wrong or something <laughs> like that wait um but also i'm 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 very curious about this like the first time you moved to germany did you learn german german the language is yes. german right yeah, german. did you learn german in indonesia or i did already attend a course so a oh. german course here in germany so i had like I would say advance, like beginning of advance uh-huh. or wow. like intermediate, probably yep. like, like mm-hmm. one step after basic. Yeah, yep. be one level. Mm. Um, but then, you know, I learned it here from an Indonesian yeah. Uh, yeah. teacher. Yep. So like the accent and everything yeah. is just like Indonesian. You still had to adapt yeah. it there. So when I arrive, I still have to like, okay, what, what, like. They talk so much faster. So, like, when she <laughs> called it to you, was it in in German? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, the language sounds really. They yes. sound they're, angry when they speak, mm, right? Mm, even when they're like in their normal speech. Yes. <laughs> do, do you know how to like when you like the in German term for like baby? Baby in German is yep. Schatz. Schatz. <laughs> even for, I love you, Schatz. Schatz. <laughs> oh, uh, it's like Wait. Dutch, Schatze. Such yeah, but they they like the way the way they baby. they do it. Like, what is the what is the word for I love you? Like ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Schatz. Schatz. <laughs> I do sound angry. <laughs> oh, okay, let, let's let's right. let's try let's try. Ich liebe dich, Schatz. That doesn't the, sound no, nice. Does it, doesn't sound romantic at yeah, all. I know, right? It doesn't sound romantic. Well, it sounds like French, like je t'aime. <laughs> 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 true, true, true. All right. Okay, let's move on to Nilam then. Nilam, like among all those five countries, which find which one that you found it really hard to adapt? Um, I think it's wait. I think it's Beijing actually. Beijing? Yeah. Why? Like I don't know. Like it was it was so sh- uh, shocking. Regardless, mm-hmm. like we we were the same like Asian country, mm-hmm. but Uh, there are certain things that uh, they did uh, differently than us. Like, uh, for example, in terms of um, cleanliness. Oh. And, uh, like For the people, for example, like Indonesian people mm. are more um, more friendly, mm-hmm. like more ha- have more warm hospitality. But in Beijing, yeah. I felt like um, they're more... I don't know how to say Cold? discreet, yeah, discreet, discreet like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. They uh, they kept their distance to us, like foreigners, because they oh. they can see us, like even even though we are the same from Asian, Asians, yeah? yeah, they can see. Oh, I'm foreigner, so like they keep so their they distance. Like, yeah. oh. But they they're nice actually. Maybe they're maybe they're just shy. Yeah, they're just, or they're just like you know, lazy because like you know. To talk. Yeah, I mean, like if you see a foreigner, first of like the first thing that I might think of is gonna be like, oh, I have to use like another language. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be hard, you know. Yeah, and, and also the um, cleanliness. Oh. And then the tell the, tell us about it. Uh, the cleanliness. Um, cleanliness. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Is it about the public toilet? The pu- the public toilet and actually everything. Like, um, I was living in Beijing, which was neighbor to Japan, right? Right. Japan was so clean and everything, but they have like entirely different cleanliness because in Japan you can't huh. see like people are really neat, clean. True. Like they keep uh, tidy, you know. But in Beijing, mm, the toilet was oh my God terrible, <laughs> and then. People just splitting like all over oh, the like, faces. Poof. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised of <laughs> Corona then. <laughs> I mean, that's how I live. People here, well, people here, I feel like they do it too a lot, but, but outside. But not. Oh my god, it was crazy. Like, it's just uh, oh. uh, you just like you just finish your food at a restaurant and you came out and people were just like. It, it would be, I, I don't speed? know if it if it their habits to, in the restaurant to spit like after meals. Okay. Oh wow! Okay, that's pretty shocking. Yeah, that's that's pretty shocking. 
Well, it's it's culture. We can't really blame them, but well, yeah, you do you. <laughs> Go Beijing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but I, I love cleanliness. it. Cleanliness. Okay, all right. And pollution, whoa. Oh, the pollution was bad? Yeah, it was really bad. It was like full dark. You know, oh, you have to yeah, foggy. Yeah, like fogging, but it's like completely dark. Completely you you dark. cannot even see the street. You have Oof. to wear a mask. And it's, it it often happens. Oh, okay. There. Like smog, I think it's called yes, smog. Smog right? and pollution. Smog, smog. As M-O-G. Mm. Wow. I, well, I knew that China... I mean, I've seen some pictures on the internet that, you know, like that show how dirty the air pollution is in China because they have a lot of factories and they have a lot of people, right? Yeah. But I didn't know that it's actually that real. <laughs> But anyway, let's move on. Um, so you guys, you you've lived in... Germany for nine years and Nilam, you you let's let's calculate how long have you been mm. living abroad like in total? I think it's seven years. Seven years, yes. which is actually a pretty long time too. Yeah. So when you guys come back to Indonesia, let's talk about reverse culture reverse shock culture now. Shock. Okay. Is there anything that you find it strange culturally, like the way people live, like something that used to be normal for you, but now it's like this is weird. People should change this. <laughs> You go first. Sorry, no, wait, me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, maybe me, uh, me first because um, I came back uh, for good to Indonesia in 2019. Mm. You know, um, right. the worst thing I got that I got hospitalized because of the <laughs> stress, because stressfulness. Of yeah, oh. because I, I couldn't adapt it here. Oh, what made you stress? I don't know, just everything. Like... It, It's it's crazy if I think about it right now because it was actually spelly. Spelly, yeah. yeah the, but it's very stressful for yeah, you. Yeah, it was very stressful for wow. me. Like for example, when I drove, mm, oh, I got headache like oh, got- <laughs> like big time, <laughs> like like big time like the street and everything like the people you know. I have to know that. Yeah. yeah, and then also um, the, food. the food. I I I also got hospitalized first because of the stress, and second because of the my stomach problem because of oh, the food. Was it? I, did you eat like bad food or what? I don't know. Maybe because I just didn't get used to it. You know, I I got used to it. Um, you know, health healthy food and stuff. True. And then when you came here, like uh, all the choices you have. I think it's also just like different kind right. of food. Yeah, yeah. different yeah. kind of food. And we also eat much more spicy. Yeah, True. yeah, and, and so, the spiciness like also. Your stomach yeah. just like got shocked. Like, what is this? True. <laughs> It's such a big challenge to actually find healthy food in Lampung. Yes. Exactly. Right? Because everything is just covered in oil. Covered in oil. Chili. Right, yeah, chili. Um, Michin. Michin. MSG. <laughs> um, what about <laughs> Dinya? Um, uh, for me, price, traffic. Oh, nice. <laughs> traffic. And, and just how to do things in general because like price like I haven't come back for good so I've been mm. here only for a month now and I'll be here for two months just for visiting my family and <clears throat> because like Indonesian's inflation rate is just much bigger so than familiar. Germany mm. like in Germany prices are pretty stable like you oh. don't have like such a high price oh chili price increased by oh, i don't know yeah. how many percentage <laughs> exactly. because of uh like that kind of thing. and in germany it's, it's it's not like that and mm. so there's one aspect of this inflation so the you know like for me the last time i bought a t-shirt and i bought it for like 100k rupiah and it was already like a lot for me at that time like uh. what in in high school or something And then now, like when I look around and a t-shirt costs 400,000, like did everyone just suddenly get rich or what is he? Like, exactly. what is this? And because I keep, um, you know, changing it into euro in my head. No. So <laughs> it's, it's reverse actually. Yeah. <laughs> so either I pay too much for things mm-hmm. or too little because I feel like I don't like, I think they're this must be a fraud like it's not possible like they must be thinking oh look at this clueless girl let me just give her this super prize and i will just pay for it because for me like when i calculated in euro in my head i was like okay that's that's acceptable Uh, and then i told my mom and then my mom was like what how much did you pay i was like this much 
Yeah, they scam you. <laughs> that's a rip off. <laughs> so that's price traffic. So I yeah. totally agree there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I couldn't cross the street. <laughs> you couldn't you, cross the street. You know oh. what else she cannot do? What? <laughs> Tell him. I can't. Like I was traveling from Bandung to Lampung uh, last time with Damri. Uh, oh, okay. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm gonna like the last time I traveled with Damri. I don't know, like eight years ago, nine <laughs> years ago. Uh-huh. And then I was like, okay, uh, what do I do here? So that's also like the point three, how to do things. Mm. I'm just useless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's probably the only thing for me. Like reverse culture shock. Mm. <laughs> you know, Damn. like passport is for me. It's 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 a piece of paper. True. Like in the end of the day, I still eat sambal every day. Uh, I yeah. still oh. cook regardless Chak where you live. Oh, yeah. And I am goreng and rendang gila, every week. Gila. <laughs> Right, <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't lie to like German passport is like what the second most powerful. Yeah, the passport second most yeah. powerful. What's the first one? Singapore. 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 Oh. And it just gives you a lot of mobility. Yeah, like true. what annoys me the most, I couldn't visit her in UK because I have to pay two hundred yeah. euro. Whoa. For a, for a visa. For a visa. For a couple of days. For a couple oh. of days. I'm like, why? Mm. Simply because my passport is green, not mm. red. Ouch, so ouch. That's a bit annoying. Nilam, what about you? I think I would say it depends on the country. <laughs> But if it's a Schengen country, I would say yes. <laughs> because of? <laughs> of course. Travel? Because of? Because of uh, first is, no, actually not the traveling, but it's more into... um. Life security, I think. Huh. You know, uh, you can get a healthcare and then um, school for uh, school for free for your kids. Mm. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. Like in Schengen countries. Yes, in European countries, oh, they no. give you money if you have give, kids. Yeah, and they even What? give you money. <laughs> they even give you money if you're unemployed. <laughs> if my mom was European, she would be very rich. <laughs> a lot of people do that like especially the Middle Eastern yes. oh yeah. I know I know about this okay let's not go that far <laughs> let's not go that far alright so well this has been actually 40 minutes running on Yay. so well it's been very fun having you Dini it's been fun. I didn't expect her to be this much fun to be honest <laughs> She's fun. But she is actually very informative. I like it. Dini for president. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And then we'll see you again in our next episode. Hello, verse. Bye. 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 <laughs>